You might catch yourself thinking sometimes that you work like a slave, but at the end of this video you'll know that nothing could be further from the truth. Slavery is alive and well, and it's not confined to far-off sweatshops in Southeast Asia. It's a lot more intertwined in Western society and much closer to home than we think. 40 million people are estimated to be trapped in slavery in the world today. One in four are children, and three-quarters of them are women and girls. We love luxury at Alux, but we also believe in fair treatment of all and a balanced knowledge of what is going on in the world. So, we decided to look at the forms of modern slavery that are going on around us today so we can avoid supporting it. Here are 10 examples of modern slavery. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Number 1. Forced Labor Forced labor is the situation where people are forced to work against their will, and there's a threat of punishment. This situation can be in terms of commercial labor, but also conducted by the government or ruling party of a country. Anti-Slavery International, or ASI, reports this as common in industries where there isn't good regulation, like domestic work, prostitution, agriculture, and fishing. Uzbekistan has one of the largest violations of this kind of labor in the world. Every year in autumn, the government forces one million people to leave their regular jobs to pick cotton. Even children are taken out of school to harvest. They are threatened and forced to work. Human Trafficking Forget Liam Neeson-type characters being on a mission to save you from human trafficking. He was only concerned with his own daughter, and she's safe now. Human trafficking is happening in front of your very eyes. Human trafficking, when people are taken against their will to another location, not necessarily across the border. There's often a recruitment phase, something people signed up for. But when they're in the hands of the captors, they're exploited using violence, coercion, or deception and forced to work. This isn't the same as people smuggling. Once the person arrives at the location, they are generally freed. In the case of human trafficking, the person moves location so they can be exploited and don't have the freedom to move and work at their own will. Once people have been trafficked, they're in bondage to their captor and forced into criminal acts, organ harvesting, sex work, hard labor, or even marriage. Number 3. Debt Bondage in its most basic form, debt bondage is working to pay off debt. It's called bonded labor or debt slavery, and often the debt is never paid off, making that person a slave for the rest of their life. The work is often brutal and there's no protection for laborers. This kind of slavery is prevalent in places like India and Pakistan, where people are trapped in poverty, borrowing money to survive, and end up having to work a lifetime to pay it off. Invariably, the hours worked compared to the loan is always in favor of the employer. Debt bondage is the most common modern-day form of slavery, and the International Labor Organization estimates there are around 21 million people working under forced labor. As Latin writer Publilius Cyrus once rightly quoted, debt is the slavery of the free. Number 4. Child Slavery or Labor Aluxers, it's important to know the difference between child slavery and child labor. Child labor is harmful to children because it keeps them from getting an education and hinders development, but generally speaking the child will take home a measly sum of money to try and support their family. Here are some figures of child labor you should know. In the fashion industry, 168 million children globally are forced to work. 73 million children work in hazardous labor conditions. One in five children in Africa are child laborers. The general age of child laborers is between 5 and 11 years old. 71% of child laborers work in the agricultural industry. We got these stats from StopChildLabor.org. Child slavery, on the other hand, is when the child is used purely for someone else's gain. Cases would include prostitution, pornography, dealing in drugs, stealing, or forced begging. It includes children going to fight in the military, child trafficking, child marriage, and forced domestic slavery. Number 5. Forced Marriage the U.S. State Department defines forced marriage as, quote, a marriage without the consent of at least one party. 
These marriages often happen out of duress or threats of death or abuse on themselves or family members. Often, forced marriage has cultural roots, but there needs to be a clear distinction between forced marriage and arranged marriages. They differ in that more often an arranged marriage is an agreement by both parties, and again, this isn't always the case. But on the whole, articles, news reports, and psychological findings have brought forward many positives around arranged marriages. GirlsNotBrides.org explains forced child marriage as the following. Child marriage is any formal marriage or informal union where one or both parties are under 18 years of age. They go on to explain that 12 million girls are married each year before they turn 18. Hey Luxers, that's 23 girls every single minute of each day. Child marriage happens across cultures, countries, and religions and is fueled by gender inequality, traditions, poverty, and insecurity. With over 15 million women aged between 20 and 24 having married as children, Bangladesh currently has 4.5 million women that were married as children, and Nigeria and Brazil follow with 3 million married before they turned 18. Number 6. Domestic Servitude On the surface, you wouldn't be aware if your neighbor was keeping a servant against their will. This form of modern-day slavery is rife, and it's a difficult one to manage. Domestic servitude takes the form of live-in domestic workers, nannies, butlers, drivers, or gardeners. They're the people you don't notice, they're invisible. These stories are common. Many immigrants come into a country desperate for work, and they get employed by wealthy families who end up abusing them, not paying them, and threatening to have them deported. New York couple Varsha Mahender Sabani and Mahender Murladar Sabani were convicted of harboring illegal residents, forced labor, and what prosecutors called, quote, a case of modern-day slavery. A similar situation took place in Georgia, where a resident managed to lure two Nigerian women to the States to look after her children. She didn't pay the women and didn't feed them properly and threatened their lives if they tried to leave and return home. Aluxers, domestic servitude is real, so be vigilant of those around you. You never know when someone might need your help. Number 7. Fast Fashion Aluxers, it's up to you and me to start making ethical fashion choices because here are some stats that are going to horrify you. The Global Garment Industry Fact Sheet, compiled by Lena Stotz and Jillian Kane, they state that up to 75 million people are employed in the textile, clothing, and shoe industry. Let's use H&M as an example. An H&M executive salary is roughly $210,000 a year. Now, let's go back to the basics and see what the cotton picker is earning. If the cotton is being picked in Uzbekistan, the cotton picker earns Nothing. Nada. Nil. Zero. They are working under forced labor conditions. It improves in India, where cotton pickers earn $2 a day. A day. In one factory in Cambodia, 200 H&M workers passed out in one week. Poor ventilation, fumes from the chemicals, and malnutrition were all blamed. Workers at this factory earn roughly $66 a month. Employees work 14 to 16 hour days, seven days a week. When it's peak season, there are extra hours with no pay. Health and safety are not a priority. Taking decent breaks in between is not a thing, and many are not even allowed to take a sip of water while they're working. We say it again, it's up to you and me to start making ethical fashion choices. Number 8. Descent-Based Slavery there are a lot of things we don't mind inheriting from our parents. Perhaps it's stunning green eyes or a strong sporty build. But one thing we wouldn't dream of inheriting is a lifetime of slavery. However, that's exactly what descent-based slavery is. A person born into slavery because their parents and grandparents were slaves, and it's passed down the maternal line. This form of slavery is seen across the Sahel Belt of Africa, including Mauritania, Niger, Mali, Chad, and Sudan. People born under these conditions are in for a lifetime of exploitation and will always remain the property of their employer. The crazy thing is, people in this position are traded like cattle. They're often gifted, sold, or left out with nothing when they're too old or sick to continue working. 
women are often sexually assaulted, and should they bear children from a relationship with another slave, their children are taken away from their mom and made to work from a young age. To escape and begin life again is near impossible, and those that do manage struggle because they don't even have a birth certificate to prove who they are. They have no identity and are nameless. Professor of Contemporary Slavery at the University of Nottingham and co-author of the Global Slavery Index, Kevin Bales, quoted the following, Slavery is theft, theft of a life, theft of work, theft of any property or produce, theft even of the children a slave might have borne. Slavery is an obscenity. It's not just stealing someone's labor, it's the theft of an entire life. Number 9. Seasonal Farm Workers This is one that's going to shock you as to how close it is to home. Seasonal fruit picking might seem like a great option to while away a summer after college or between jobs, but the reality for seasonal fruit pickers reliant on the living wage is completely different. The United Kingdom is one of the regular offenders of exploiting seasonal farm workers. From 2016 to 2017, the number of modern-day slavery cases rose by 35%. The farming industry is estimated to be responsible for 10,000 to 13,000 people living in slavery arrangements. Many Eastern European young men are recruited for the service of seasonal fruit picking on fruit farms across the United Kingdom. But when they show up to their dream summer job, their worst nightmares unfold. The workdays can be as long as 15 hours with no breaks, no safety gear, and terrible working conditions, all for less than the legal minimum wage. Then the caravan setups they're offered for accommodations are overcrowded, unsafe, and unsanitary. Many of these recruits were brought to the UK by licensed gangmasters from their home countries. They demand placement fees from their farmers and high commission from farm workers. Failure to pay this commission can lead to violence and abuse. And if you didn't feel this was a raw enough deal already, those are the legal recruits' experience. Criminal groups also traffic illegal workers from abroad and undercut the already below minimum wages of licensed gangmasters. Their experience is far worse. Number 10. Building in Dubai Another example of modern slavery is the construction industry in Dubai. It's been reported that migrant workers from illiterate and impoverished communities are targeted and convinced by glossy employment opportunities to sign up to work in Dubai. But when they arrive, their passports are taken away and they're forced into slavery work camps and inhumane living conditions. This system is largely protected under the Kafa law system in the Gulf countries. It basically gives private countries the responsibility and oversight of workers. If workers wish to change jobs, they have to get permission from their employer, who is seldom willing to give it without some form of payoff like docking wages. This arrangement leaves the employee open to exploitation at the complete mercy of the employer. The worst part is, the worker's exit visa is also under the control of their employer, so they are completely stuck in servanthood until the employer lets them leave. Well, Aluxers, that's the end of our list for today. What do you do to avoid supporting companies that support slavery? And what's the worst company you know of in terms of staff treatment? Let us know in the comments. And of course, since you stuck with us until the end, we do have one bonus for you. Your smartphone could be powered by child labor. Consumerism is ruthless, and it's not just farming and fast fashion that have slavery on their hands. Cell phone companies benefit from cheap, unregistered slave labor too. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, or DRC in Central Africa, is responsible for half the world's supply of cobalt, an element that is integral to mobile phone batteries. One-fifth of this cobalt is extracted by informal miners, of which 40,000 of them are children, some as young as seven years old. Informal miners dig holes tens of meters deep by using tools like a chisel and hammer if they're lucky, otherwise they are dug by hand. Most child workers work on group-level sifting through leftover rubble for cobalt ore. Rock collapses are one of the more obvious dangers, but cobalt dust can cause hard metal lung disease, which can be potentially fatal. There's no access to safety gloves or masks, so where there is skin contact with cobalt, dermatitis is common. 
An average workday for a child laborer is 12 hours spent 20 to 40 kilogram loads, and for the effort, just one to two dollars a day. So next time you complain about the cost of your phone, you should ask your cell phone manufacturer where exactly that money is going. The cost of profit could be a child's life. Thanks for watching, Alexers. We value your thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more thought provoking videos every day.